Okay, everybody. Um, welcome back once again to the Hoplite channel. Uh, I am your host. So I, uh, I was going through the uh, video editing of um, part one of Seneca and how we covered uh, his biography and uh, a few selected readings on anger. And I decided that I was going to give it one more part, uh, part two for Seneca. We're going to continue with anger uh, for this video. It won't be as long as the last, but I just felt like it was, you know, uh, a topic that he covered worth uh, doing two videos on. So, um, yeah, uh, this is part two. And uh, going through the notes, I found um, Seneca had actually uh, written down uh, what he believed were the uh, chief sources of most people's anger. Um, not the only sources, but in his experience, in his understanding of how anger was such a powerful emotion for people and how it could really sweep someone away, uh, he identified a couple sources. And we have eight right here. So um, let's talk about them, right? So uh, first one he says he has amaris, which is uh, bitter, bitterness. Bitterness is, is one of those um, feelings um, of anger that linger on, right? You know, someone is bitter about something. It's, it's, it's a lasting feeling. Let's say, let, let's say you and a friend or, or, or an enemy, uh, you know, had it out and you, you made amends. You shook hands over it. But there's still something within you that can't let it go entirely and you're still bitter about what happened um, that's this Amara source of anger and bitterness is it's it's one of those hard things to get over but it's it's a lasting um, feeling of anger that kind of you know as the fire goes out it's that one little ember in the back of the fireplace that still still burns still hot it could still light a fire but it's it never quite goes out that was bitterness after this uh, so a acerbic, you know, harsh, something harsh tasting. Um, this is when, you know, you have uh, this mind about you just to be mean, just to be a prick. You know, you're harsh to somebody. Like, you know, uh, let's say you don't really care for someone and, you know, they let's say they finished a painting and they bring everyone around to, you know, look at it and give their opinions. And just to be harsh, you criticize it, you know. Oh, this is ugly. Uh, whoever did this had obviously has no talent. You're just being a jerk. You're being harsh. Uh, that's a kind of anger where, like, maybe you don't feel great about yourself. So you know what? Why should this pe person feel good about themselves? That's harshness. Stomachus, testy. Where we get the word stomach? Someone says, you know, I can't stomach you. I can't stomach this. I don't have the stomach for it. Uh, the Greeks and the Romans believe that if your stomach was upset, you know, your constitution was not right. You were testy, you know, you just, you were irritable, like just your stomach, you know, kind of felt like it was, you know, rolling over on itself. To be testy, to, you know, have this stomachus anger was to be, uh, you know, uh, easily brought to confrontation. Like it wouldn't take much to get you uh, into a fight. Uh, the testiness, you know, the uh, itching for a fight. Rabiosis, frenzy, right? So we get the word, uh, you know, rabies. He's rabid. He's frenzy. Stay away from him. Uh, this this frenzy uh, and next uh, clamosis, uh, ranting. It's where we get the word clamor. Uh, rabiosis and clamosis. That's essentially the rage uh, stage of anger. So if you're in a frenzy and you're ranting, you are fit to be tied. You know, you've you've all seen those people. They're throwing chairs. You know, they're, 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 they'll, they'll kick the dog. They're so mad. They're in a frenzy. Um, they're just they just want to you know do harm. And um, this rabiosis and clonosis stage of, of anger is dangerous because in that rage, wrath is what follows. And as I said in the last video, um, when wrath takes over and rage, uh, you know, metastasizes into wrath, bad things happen. And then regret follows because damage is done that can't be undone. Difficilis, frustration. Okay, I'm going to go on a limb and say it. Men, when they want to do harm and vent their anger, they usually go into rabiosis and ranting. They're frenzied. They're mad. They're ranting and raving. They're just, they are ready to just 
pound. They they are ready to just swing hands and you know and crack skulls. That's this physical manifestation of the anger. It's I'm going to just take my anger up here and I'm going to just fireball out my 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 aggression into uh, physical uh, conflict and and pain uh, as it as it is uh, applied um, through you know the nerves your nervous system registers pain well good because my anger up here is now your nervous system pain that's how men apply it uh, by and large women will say the difficilis this is the passive aggressive anger this is the person who understands maybe they can't harm you physically as in they can't hold you down and make you cry uncle but they can be difficult they could just make your life uh, a little less easier they could put things in your way they could claim they're helping you when they're actually you know in their own mind doing things to make life harder on you this is the womanly method of uh, getting out aggression to be the passive aggressive difficult one to be frustrating to see you get angry and to see you rage over the difficilis that's its own type of anger asper prickly okay this is kind of like the crotchety old man anger right he just he doesn't see joy or find joy in anything so he's always prickly he sees other people having fun or enjoying life and he's he's just he's upset about it you know like oh, these kids nowadays with their jazz music and their you know their convertible cars uh, they're all bums their parents are bums and their kids are gonna be bums everyone's a bum he's prickly right he's just maybe his life has been hard on him maybe a lot of anger from these categories has kind of you know uh, just piled on top of him and now he's prickly morosis peevishness you say like what's a, what's a pet peeve of yours right what makes you peevish that's just little stuff that just gets under your skin it's inconsequential but you know it, it still bothers you that that kind of anger can come from peevishness pet peeve you know you're, you're sitting there and you're talking to someone and uh, you know they drop a line from a, a show you're not familiar with and you know you just pull that confused dog face and they're like you know, you know what that is right like no what, what are you talking about you know it's from friends Ross said that to Rachel in season 9 episode 83 and then you you know you're looking no I, I don't watch that low IQ garbage what are you talking about oh well you know I, you know popular show I figure you would know it's a pet peeve someone drops this line you don't know what it is they make you feel stupid for not knowing that could go into bitterness too it's like why did that person do that you know they don't have a pet peeve they drop you know references to things I don't know and make me feel dumb you know because I don't know I'm bitter now for that source of anger it's it's inconsequential oh Ross said that to Rachel cool good for, good for Rachel and just move on okay now let's say uh, all of these things taken together and you you mix them up into you know a cauldron and you get the scary green man okay mythical uh, to my knowledge nothing like this exists in you know reality or, or fiction um, and let's say that because of all this anger you know he gets big and he's angry and what does he do he smashes things his bigness and his his anger man, uh, makes him just go into a rage and he just he's wrathful what happens as he gets angry well he gets bigger and then he smashes more things what's the only what's the only cure for this big scary green man and it's time it's calm it's peace self-control uh, give yourself time let yourself calm down find enough peace where you can get yourself together to self-control your emotions again and the scary green man will go away he lives in every one of us that's for sure some people have zero control over the scary green man and he just comes out but like I said with a wrathful person those people can't be trusted you're just going to avoid them or the wrathful person who also lets a scary green man out they're going to look for conflict with your scary green man time calm peace self-control all right one last reading from Seneca again in the uh, anger mercy revenge handbook here to conclude this this is on page 84 uh, this is a stanza 25 
Yes. Quote, that man whom I just now described as standing taller than any vexation holds the greatest good, as it were, in an embrace. He can say, not just to another person, but to fortune herself, do what you may. You are too puny to eclipse my serenity. Reason, to which I've entrusted my life's direction, forbids this. Anger is going to do me more harm than any wrong. How could it not? A wrong has a determinate limit, but I don't know how far anger will carry me. Right. If you've been harmed, if you've been wronged, and you let the scary green man out, he could carry you away. He could carry you way beyond any of the harm you were done. So, live in a state of self-control. Understand you've been harmed, but don't let that scary green man out because if he picks you up and carries you away, there's no, far, there's no telling how far he could take you. And as I mentioned in the last video, the cliff. If the green man is in control, you will walk up to that cliff and you will throw yourself over. And if you fall fast enough, you won't be able to reach out and grab a branch to stop yourself. You will be in it until you hit the bottom of that cliff. Okay. That's a good one to wrap up on. Uh, Seneca part two um, on anger. I'll jump into part three with Seneca and we'll do on clemency. And um, we'll wrap up Seneca and move on to Epictetus. Okay, if you're liking this stuff, you know, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it, etc. And um, we'll see you next time. Take it easy.